This is day three, video three. We're going to focus on using Solver in Excel. So before we get started here, you do want to make sure you have Solver installed on your Excel. Uh, to see if you have it, you want to go to the Data tab, and you should see Solver there. If you don't have it, go to File, down to Options, select Add-ins, and on the list of add-ins, you should see the solver add-in, and then hit go, and then hit OK. And once you do that, you should see the solver um, option under data. All right, once we've got that in there, let's go ahead and start on problem 3B. In problem 3A, we created this input-output table for this function g of t. And part B asks us to find the input value of g that makes g of t equal 35. So we're trying to find the value of t that makes the output equal 35. So on the input-output table we created, we see that the function has an output of 28 when the input is 3, and it's up to an output value of 37 when the input's 12. So somewhere in between, it's going to reach a height of 35. We'll use Solver to find that. The first thing you want to do, I'm going to go ahead and um, have the Solver solution show up in row 6. All right. So I put my cursor into the output cell. So my cursor is in cell B6. You make sure that you have the formula of the function typed in there, and I do. It, it equals 6 times natural log 40 times a 6 minus 3. All right, so my cursor's in that cell with the formula in it. I now click Solver. There's three things we're going to have Solver filled in. First of all, you see set objective is referencing cell B6, where I have the formula. So the set objective cell should be the output cell, where the formula is. I want it to change to a value of 35. So I want it to change this cell B6 to have a value of 35. And I want it to do that by changing the variable cell A6. So I want the Y value to equal 35 by changing the X value. And Solver will change the value of this x in order to make the y value equal 35. All right, once you have those three things in, y value, the value you want the y value to be, referencing the x value, hit solve. It says, do you want to keep this solver solution? Yes, I do. So I hit OK. All right, now there's always going to be a little bit of error in the value that uh, solver returns, but it's going to be pretty dang close usually. So it changed the input value to t equals 8.6124, and that creates a y value of 35. You might have a slightly different value because of rounding, but it's going to be about 8.6124. So t equals 8.6124. Let's try again. So example 4, we're going to have a whole new function, f of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus 12x. And I want to find when that function has a y value equal to 10. Now I've given a little graph of that function. It's a third degree polynomial. It's this wavy curve here. And I've inserted in there a horizontal line that has a height of 10. You can see that this horizontal line at a height of 10 hits, intersects the function at three different places. So there should be three solutions to this. There's three places, three x values, where this function reaches a height of 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Excel. I'm going to make a little input-output table, x, f of x. Okay, this is giving me a little bit better estimate on where those three points are. So you notice here, when x is negative 1, we get a height of 12. When x is negative 2, it's higher. When x is negative 3, it's lower. When x is negative 4, it's even lower to 0. So it looks like the places where it's going to hit a height of 10 are going to be on this interval. The three solutions will be on these intervals. 
It looks like there's going to be 1 in between x is negative 3 and x is negative 4. It's going to reach a height of 10 somewhere in between there. There's going to be another in between x is negative 1 and x is 0. So I'm going to write here-ish, here-ish. And there's going to be another one over here between x is 3 and x is 4. It's going to reach a height of 10 again, here-ish. Now we're going to use the solver to have the Excel function change it and identify exactly where that's occurring. But since there's three solutions, we're going to have to give it a little bit of a seed value to tell it approximately the solution point that you're looking for. So again, you put your cursor in the Y value cell. Make sure your formula is in there. Hit Solver. All right, I want set objective to be this Y value cell. I want it to change to a value of 10 by changing this x value cell here next to it. Now I'm going to add in a, a constraint here which will feed it kind of a seed value, an interval on which to look for the solution. So I know there's going to be a solution somewhere between negative 4 and negative 3, a solution x between x is negative 4 and x is negative 3. And you can add that in. You can say, hey, Excel, I want this x value cell, the cell reference A10, to be greater than or equal to negative 4. I'm going to add in another one, and I want this x value cell to be less than or equal to negative 3. And notice it added those in. The x value will be less than or equal to negative 3, greater than or equal to negative 4. Solve, and it finds it. It finds the x value between negative 3 and negative 4 that makes the y equal 10. Again, there's a little bit of rounding error there. The x is approximately negative 3.5. 7, 4, 5. Let's try it again. All right, we know there's a solution somewhere between x is negative 1 and x is 0. I'm going to just put it here. I put my cursor in the y value cell, hit solver. So I have the y value cell equal this y value cell. It's going to equal a value of 10 by changing the x value cell next to it. I'm going to delete these two constraints and add in a different set of constraints. I want the x value to be greater than or equal to negative 1, and I want the x value to be less than or equal to 0. So the x will be less than or equal to 0, but greater than or equal to negative 1. Solve. <laughs> All right, it says when x is negative 0.8234, that you'll get a y value equal to 10. Again, a little bit of rounding error there, but it's pretty close. One more time. I put my cursor in the y value cell. Click on Solver. I want this y value cell with the formula in it to equal a value of 10 by changing the x value cell next to it. Delete out these. All right, the constraints I'm going to add. It needs to be somewhere between x is 3 and x is 4. So I add in. This x value cell should be greater than or equal to 3 and this x value cell should be less than or equal to 4. Add it in. Oops, OK. Less than 4, greater than 3. Hit solve. And it finds it. It says when the x is equal to about 3.9783. So these are the three x's. Again, a little bit of rounding error, but it's pretty close.